I, I think it's always very important to understand your limitations. And I understood immediately that uh, I could not develop into any exciting player, you know. I, but I, I thought it would have been uh, at least as rewarding to try to contribute to to leave basketball, which was my my passion, in, 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 with different roles and. And I have to say that at the very, very beginning, I thought that uh, coaching was could have been that uh, that sort of a path to follow. And uh, but then, you know, it developed what it developed. You, know? <laughs> you need to understand that it was a uh, times were very, very different. Uh, I always have uh, difficulties when I go around these days and talk to especially young people to explain that when I started my let's say life in basketball i there was no computer no cell phones no fax machine the only thing that actually you could work with was a telex machine telex machine yeah. and otherwise we had a phone you know in the wall yeah. and whenever you needed to call uh, overseas you had to wait three to five hours in line waiting for they for them to call you back and connect uh, I was lucky that uh, I just came back from the United States as an exchange student and, uh, and uh, the team was one of the teams selected by the Italian Federation to create the new A2 division. It was the first year. So actually they came up to me and said, hey, since you just came, came back from the States, you speak the language. Maybe you know somebody in basketball. There were no agents either. So it was not like, yeah, can you help us finding one American for the team? And that was my way into whatever developed afterwards. And, uh, and, uh, and that's where it started. That first year, I was like uh, the stat guy. Well, actually, there was no stat guy, but I was on the bench as a let's say, team uh, uh, bench manager, only to keep stats, but my, my primary role was to speak to the foreign, yeah. foreign players so that he could communicate with the rest of the group. And it was by, un unfortunately, halfway through the season, the head coach had a heart attack. And uh, at that point, you know, there were no budgets at the end. There were no, so they decided to promote the assistant coach, yeah. head coach, yeah. and I was, and, and I was elevated to assistant coach when nobody really knew what assistant coach meant, you know. But we won, we won the championship when we moved to A1, so it was a very successful first year. And, and that's, that's where I start thinking coaching. That's where I start, uh, I leave basketball as much time as I had available. I had uh, one or two youth program teams. And I try to spend as much time as possible in, inside the club. I always say that one key period of my life as an executive was those eight years uh, as assistant coach, but as everything inside a very small club. I, I learned the dynamics of a, of, a, of a locker room. I learned how to consider uh, media rather than selling tickets, rather than uh, federation rules, right? You know, you, it was a learning process through a lot of components. And uh, I think that helped me for what it came afterwards. But um, that time was also very important for me to get involved in, in other basketball activities that was something very new for Italy and for Europe yeah. in general. Basketball camps, basketball clinics, the first uh, basketball movies from you know NBA yeah. games that were coming in movie theaters. Uh, I translated books. I helped uh, uh, creating the first coaches magazine. I did a lot of things that were something completely new for the how basketball was growing in, 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 in you know in my country in Italy at that time. <laughs>